Hello and welcome. Today we're installing the Home Safe View app for your Swan security system on a Windows 10 PC. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to swan.com, that's S W A N N.com, and this will redirect you to your local Swan web page. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to the support section, find the downloads, and download Home Safe View. Funnily enough, find the version for your PC, Mac, or Android device, click the Home Safe View link, download that bad boy, and install it at your leisure. When you're done, click Finish and Home Safe View will launch. Once that launches, if you've set an admin password, type it in and click Login. If you haven't, then simply leave it blank and click Login. I'm clicking the Enable Auto Login box because I'm the only person that uses this PC. But if you have a PC that's for public use, then don't click Automatic Login. Now, once we're in, we simply need to go to the wizard or group device management but the easiest way to do it is to go to help and then open wizard simply hit next when the wizard starts now from here you want to hit add online device and if your device doesn't show up there then hit refresh select your device and hit add selected device give your device a name any name you like is fine. I'm calling mine CCTV. And I'm sticking in my username and password. The default username is admin, but you can add more later and hit add. Then on your left hand side, you have your added online device, which is your security system. On the right hand side, you can hit modify and type a name for the new group. Now, this will show you all the channels on your DVR. I've only got three channels plugged in. I'm gonna select the channels I want on the left-hand side, hit import, and they'll be imported to the group on the right-hand side. Simply select the channel you want, hit import, and as you can see, they get added to your group. Once that's done, hit next. And that is the basic wizard complete. Hit finish. And from this point, you can go to a few different sections. You can hit main view, expand the group that we've just created. And as you can see, we've got channel one, three, and four, the ones we added. We can double click them and they will load. And we can have a quick gander at what's going on. Once you're done with that, you can click back at the tab at the top saying control panel and select another option. Remote playback's a useful one. Now in this screen, you've got your group again on the left hand side and you've got a calendar. You can select the file type that you want to search for. I'm selecting the date there. I'm going to expand the group and select the cameras I want to search on. And I'm going to select the file types I want to search for. I'll select all so I don't miss anything and hit search. And at the bottom there, you can see everything that was recorded within the parameters I've just set. Once you're done with that screen, you can exit out or click back onto control panel. And then maybe duck into some account management. Hit add to add a new user account. I'm going to create an account for Dave. I'm going to set his password. And then I'm going to select the user privileges. Now, if you don't really trust Dave, you might want to deselect some of these privileges. I'm going to give him access to all the cameras, as you can see there on the right. And we're going to deselect some of these options on the left. Maybe Dave's an ex con or something and can't be trusted. And we don't want to give him full access. Once we've decided what we're going to give Dave, we hit save. And hopefully that gets added to the list of users. As you can see there. Now this is useful if you can have multiple people using the device.
during the day, you might not want everyone to have full access. If you go back into the main view now, right click your group CCTV and select remote configuration. We can configure a few other bits and bobs from in here. Under alarm, this is quite interesting. You can set, you can select the zones in which you want the motion detection to start recording. I personally don't want so much of the road triggering the motion detection and either alerting me or recording. So I'm going to deselect some of the road here and hit save. And hopefully we'll get less cars driving past and just more of the important stuff if anyone comes into the driveway. And obviously you can do this for all your active channels by selecting the channel option and just make sure you hit save and refresh to check that everything's set as you think it is. It's a bit fiddly to be honest if you're doing it on a small screen because they're tiny little pixels and you can end up deselecting and selecting the incorrect stuff if you're not careful. So if you get in trouble, just hit clear and start again. Channel two is not plugged in, but channel three is. What's recording? Okay, so that's the garden. We want most of that. We want most of that in the motion detection zone. We want any motion within this entire area to be recorded. So I'm going to leave that selected there. And last but not least, channel four. So we'll leave that as it is. If we go into system, you can set your time and date and your basic stuff. You can go to channel info and check what resolution and frame rate you're recording at. And if you go to display and live, you can change the labels that show up on the recordings. So if I just change this one from front drive to just drive, hit save and for it to change, you'll need to hit refresh. There you go. So, I mean, there's some settings that you're just not going to want to change. You're either not going to understand them or there's going to be no benefit for you to change them. Um, here under record and mainstream, I reduced my recording resolution to 1920 by 1080 because the higher the resolution, the less frame rate you can get on this system. So, I prefer to record at 1920 by 1080 personally and select 30, frame, 30 frames a second and a constant bit rate. But if you're not having any problems, then just leave it all as default. There's no need to change any of it. Again, if you make any changes, hit save, hit refresh to make sure your changes have been saved. And then you're good to go. Under network, you can set your email credentials if you should wish to do so. Every time you get motion or some sort of alert, it can email you. Personally, I don't set that up purely because I can't be bothered to get hammered with emails all day. But if I was away on holiday or something, I might set that up. Um, you'll probably need to get your email configuration settings from your email service provider. Now in device and cloud storage, you can configure that with a Dropbox account, which is quite handy. I think it will send stills and things to a Dropbox account. And in advance, you can update the firmware of the DVR, should you wish to do so. And reset settings to default. So that pretty much covers the basics. I'm going to go into a bit more detail on a few of these things in another video, but for now, enjoy your Swan security system. Don't become obsessed and start staring at it 24 seven like I do. It's bad for your health. And that's it for now. We've been Zany Geek. Please like, comment and subscribe.